Right. Uh, how many of you have seen Pleasantville? Okay, great. You just, you just took me to, to Pleasantville. Great, uh, great scene in Pleasantville when they're in the bowling alley. And the guy comes and, uh, and shows that his shirt has been burnt and that he didn't have a meal. And, uh, but his shirt was burnt. And when he asked his wife why his shirt was burnt, because Pleasantville was set in the 1950s and a completely different era around, uh, around the gendered reality. And, uh, and he says that he, when he asked his wife, her response was, I was thinking. And in the 1950s, I guess, in those sitcoms, women didn't necessarily have to think. Okay, begin to think is beginning to be undermined. I say that because I've put a, a couple of things on the table for you now, collectively, as a group. I put them on the table for you. So the Socratic method, leadership moments. I put a few things out there for you. Okay, I've, I've pushed against whatever you, notion you have about leadership, I've pushed against it and asked you, to step up and be a leader in some different context that you may not have thought about, okay? Including self-evaluating yourself. Is my language appropriate? And that's everybody in the room, okay? This, again, this goes all the way back to the Jackie clip. I mean, you got a black man standing in front of you who's a chief diversity officer who has suffered the slings and arrows of the position uh, in a predominantly white town by black people in the town who, get, who have been frustrated with me, just like what, not to draw a, a, a parallel too much to this, but just like Barack Obama as President of the United States, black people were upset because he didn't do enough for the black community. Well, you need to understand what your constituency is. If Barack Obama had come out the blocks trying to do too much for the black community in his first four years, he would not have had a second four years. He needed to, he needed to reach out across the lines and try to create a whole lot of different things. As a, as a black man in a predominantly white area, the reason why I have not front-loaded and put blackness on the top of my agenda is not on the bottom, it's just equal with everything else, is because diversity is not just a one-dimensional conversation about race. And if you really want to change the game, you need allies. So if we find a way to make sure that we all understand what we have in common, our common struggle, then we start to care about each other on some profound levels and we advance our cause. We're starting to understand that now more than probably ever. It's ironic. If Hillary had won the election, there's a level of engagement in this, com in this country that we would not have. So it's a double-edged sword right now because, yes, I know the majority of people in the country probably would like to have seen a Hillary presidency or maybe even a Bernie presidency or maybe even a um, RVP, Biden, maybe even a Biden presidency. But that's not what we have. We have a Donald Trump presidency. And I'm not going to go too far in that because you're not supposed to talk about politics and religion. But I will tell you this, I, I have a column in the Press Republican. I write it about once a month. If you Google me and you Google the word column, you'll get a lot of my columns. I wrote a column about the, the Trump presidency. And at the end of it, I said, uh, this won't be popular. And Trump lost me when he mocked the disabled reporter. That just, he lost me with that. I, I don't even understand how you do that. Obviously, the video, rapists, and all the other things, so there's just too much there, okay? Yet, from the moment he was elected, and my president, Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton, both, even if it was posturing, said, we need to give him a chance. I've tried to reframe all this, because I do not want our president to fail. Because if he fails, we fail, on some profound levels. So, there's a lot attached to that, but I ended the column with, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed jack is king. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed jack is king. What does that mean? That means that while I'm trying my best to reframe the Trump presidency, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed jack is king, I'm the one-eyed jack. I have an eye open. I'm not going to be duped. I'm sure you won't.